Well, welcome back to SAFC Live. Myself and Danny are back here at the Stadium of Light in Quinn's Sports Bar. And you've got to think, how was that game nil-nil? Yeah, how was it nil-nil? Yeah, I think so. I think especially first half, um, you know, at 11 11 we were at our best, really. Creating chances, openings, it was there for us. And I said after 20 minutes or so, you know, when you're on top, you've got to put the ball away. I think you look obviously back at the, the big chance, really, it was Rusin's chance, wasn't it? That yeah. one-on-one threaded through. That would have been the opportunity he'd have been hoping for, really. You know, he didn't get it last week as well as he'd done off the ball. Yeah. That's the chance you want as a centre forward. And then into the second half, obviously, they had the penalty. Lifeline for us in a way, really. Um, great save from Anthony Patterson. Second half, you come out thinking we've got 45 minutes now. You know, you're expecting us to get the goals. You know, we've been scoring for fun, really, this season. Um, made the changes. But it's difficult, you know, if, if you play against the team there, when they go down to 10 men, and I said that, if you're looking back at us against Middlesbrough, we almost still played against Middlesbrough like we felt we can still go on and win the game and played open and got put to the sword. Whereas they, they sat deep, they made changes, they brought Cabango on, timed it up at the back. And yeah, for all that we huffed and puffed really in that second half, bars hit the crossbar, but couldn't find that clear cut opening chance. Frustrating, you know, it feels like two points have been, been left down there in South Wales, but for, for Swansea, give them credit and that'll feel like a win for them. Yes, frustrating at the moment for ourselves and yeah. Sunderland fans as well, but there's many positives to be taken from that game. Sunderland enjoying loads of possession, creating good opportunities. Rusin getting in good positions yeah. as well. Patrick Roberts being very effective from the right hand side. Jack Clark being effective from the left hand side. Good balance throughout the game yeah. as well from Sunderland. Yeah, no, I think if you assess it, and again, going back to the first half, that's some of the best football we've played this season. Uh, you know, going down to Swansea, They've had a good win in the week. They've been in pretty decent form, really. Won five of the last seven. And they're at home, but we controlled it, really, from minute one. Thought we started really well. Dan Neal was getting on the ball, almost playing as a number 10, really. And then getting up there alongside Job and just in behind Rusin. Uh, and just felt early on, I thought, right, we're at it here today. This is going to be a decent performance and we're going to get a result. Um, and then, obviously, as the game wore on, they're down to 10 men. They get that penalty. And they think, oh, no, this is one of these, isn't it? It's going to be a frustrating afternoon. But then... When he makes the save, Anthony Pats, and then you're thinking, right, come out setting off now. Let's get back on the front foot. We, we didn't start the half well, to be fair, setting off. It was scruffy. We give a couple of cheap balls away. They, then yellow cards were flying around, weren't they? I think both centre-backs are suspended now, possibly, for yes, us. Yes, I've just had that confirmed. At. That's five yeah. for 09 and um, Ballard. So, selection issues for yeah, next weekend. Yeah, going into that next weekend, yeah. He obviously changed the formation. He's made the subs quick. It'd be interesting now what, what, what the fans say, really, because obviously... More often than not, you hear that the fans saying, oh, we didn't make the changes quick enough. Now, Tony Mowbray, 55 minutes, has That's made early. triple yeah. substitution. I think Rusin will probably be frustrated because you're just getting into the second half and he's probably thinking, oh, I'm going to get a couple of opportunities. But he came off. Obviously, Niall Huggins came off and, and Job came off straight away. So we changed it. You're getting a couple of number 10s in Dak and, and Alex Pritchard on there. Um, Barr came on, obviously, as we said there, hit the ball. We'll get onto the highlights now. But... Um, yeah, just looking for that real good golden opportunity. We put some ball into the box. They've defended it well time and time again. Uh, but yeah, it was a frustrating one and that happens in football. And just looking back through some now, of the yeah. chances here from the game. We'll look back now uh, through the highlights as, as we're discussing these things, Danny, because sometimes it's better explained with the pictures as well. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and you see, there's Dan straight into it and it's just said there, he's almost as a number 10 now, isn't he? He's received a couple of balls early on in that, in that position, just edge of the box, really. I think he's got a right to take the first one. You can see him and Patrick having a few words. Yes, Patrick's spare, but it opened up for Dan to take the strike and if he smashes that in the bottom corner, you're not going to argue. Uh, this one there, it's a difficult one once it comes back to him. He doesn't really get it out of his feet to, to give himself the opportunity to go either side. Um, Pierre involved as well and that's the first booking, isn't it, for Patino? Leaves one on. Pierre Equa there, and it's obviously them two that come together again for, for the sending off. The challenges so, from Trey Hume. <laughs> yeah, showing this one, he loves the challenges, doesn't he? Trey, and, you know, it's a great sliding tackle. Grimes ends up in a pile. Um, but I, I fancy just look at the bodies we're getting forward, and it's in there, and that's the big opportunity. Um, I was going to say he does everything right up until the moment he strikes the ball. It's a lovely weight on the just pass from Joe. Bit, maybe. Just look now. So he, I don't know if it's after that or his, his, his weight's going to that left-hand side. Just see it back now, look. And that's what you wanted to do, open himself up. If that goes in the bottom corner, you're thinking, yeah, everything's you know, come off well there, isn't it? Your centre-forward's getting, getting you a goal. But he's in there again, isn't he? I think Darling does just enough on that one. It gets across him and just gets a little touch on it. Opportunity goes away there. 
but his movement was good. I thought his hold-up play was good at times in that first half up against big centre-backs. You know, he backs himself in, doesn't he? He's not the biggest, but he, he uses his weight well. Uh, and then Jack there, credit to the goalkeeper. As we not mentioned him there. Yeah. Uh, when we've come back on there, he made a couple of good saves, didn't he? Good save with his left hand on that occasion. Help, crossbars helped him out on a couple of times as well. And here's the, uh, here's Second the big yellow. decision, isn't it? Yeah. I think it's unfortunate, you know, it's, it's a ball there to be won and Pierre just gets there ahead of him. Uh, some referees, by the way, would have known, oh, I've already booked him, I'll give him a stern talking to, especially mm. as the home team, but, you know... He's yeah, been, the, he's the home fans were up. quite frustrated about Bobby Madley, but yeah. I don't think he, was, he did got many things wrong yeah, this do, afternoon. Do you know what? Their fans will be going away and they'll be saying, oh, the referee gave a lot of decisions to Sunderland. I think he's got most of them right. Arguably, he could have booked Luco 9 for the first one on, on uh, Jerry Yates on the halfway line first half. Other than that, as you say, I don't think he's got too much wrong there. Uh, booked Harry Darling for time wasting. Yeah. He's booked Luco nine. He's booked Dan Ballard second half, hasn't he? Um, and then, there's another fantastic save from the goalkeeper Patrick coming in on his left foot, as we know he likes to. More often than not, Patrick will look to to find that far side netting, but he reverses it and it comes through a couple of players. Watch there, they've got two or three bodies, and he's down really well to his left hand side. Excellent save for, from the goalkeeper. Uh, and then we're just trying to work it. Yeah, Dan Neal, a little give and go on that one there. Lends it in, doesn't he? Gets the strike away, but it's difficult when they've got that many bodies. And there's the decision for the penalty. Now just keep your eye on Luke. He's not really looking at the ball, he's looking away from it. And then just there's a little shirt pull, and then he almost throws his man to the ground. And then Colin does, does go down, down well. easily. Yeah, he but... does, but don't give the ref a decision to make. And now you could say now he's, he's obviously sent their lad off. The crowd, he, he knows the crowd are getting on him a little bit, and he probably thinks now, oh, I've seen that there, I'm going to give it. Um, but yeah, Anthony Patterson steps up, doesn't he? Low from their point of view, it's that penalty. It's one of those, isn't it, where he looks a little bit slow, he's sluggish, walking up to the ball, a little bit casual. And then when the goalkeeper goes the right way, it doesn't look great from the penalty taker's point of view. Um, and then right on half time, Jack, looking for that top corner, comes off the top of the crossbar. So it, it was a frustrating first half in a way. Take the penalty out of it, which could have gone against us if he, if he finds the back of the net. But we were excellent in that first half. Some of the football we played was fantastic. The rotation off the ball was excellent. Um, and then into the second half, I said we didn't start as well as we, as we finished the first half. A little bit scruffy, they were having a bit of the ball, we were giving it away cheap. Um, and then there was a lot of ball going into the box. But yes, they made changes, they sat back and just look at him now, out of possession, look at Swansea. Four or five bodies in there, and unless that ball's right on the money, it's a difficult one to, to get on the end of it. That one there, Patrick chops inside, Hemir off the bench. He didn't he, get a, a real clear opportunity, opportunity no, did he? he? Never, no. So that'll be something that the fans maybe talk about, you know, you've taken Roosin off. Is it a bit harsh? You know, you've took him off on 55 minutes. <coughs> Excuse me, you've still got half an hour or so to, for him to get that opportunity. This is as close as one came in the second yeah, half. Yeah, that's their one in the second half, really, wasn't it? Lowe actually does well. He chops inside him, but trying to pass it into that far corner. Doesn't get enough purchase on the ball uh, as he chops inside Dan Ballard. Um, but yeah, then it was all about ourselves, really, wasn't it? They clear it, we regain possession, and we come again. And for all the bodies we've got forward, it was going to be. I said there, it's either going to be something coming off someone's backside. We nearly had the one off Luco 9, where I think Dan Ballard had the header, didn't he? Yep. And the keeper adjusted really well. Um, but yeah, we were getting into these areas, and it's difficult whatever level you play at. I say the amount of bodies in there, getting behind the ball. So, there's so many crosses today from a Sunderland perspective yeah. as well. Just none yeah. of them drop into a pink shirt. No, they didn't know. And I say that sometimes it's, it's when they've made that block, and as you say, you just need Johnny on the spot just to stab one home. But it, we didn't have that that one there. It takes the deflection. It could have quite easily gone into the path of Hemier there. This is the one. Yeah, yeah keeper does well, doesn't he? I don't think Luke knew much no. about it. I think it's off Ballard, onto Luke, he doesn't know much about it, as you Another say. Another brilliant save. Keeper's going the other way and he just, just instinct, isn't it? Puts the left left hand up and gets enough on it, over the top. I mean, Dak here, I think he's trying to cushion it down I there do as well, I think he just Pierre sees, Edouard. just seen Pierre's there in front of him and he just goes to cushion it for him. Um, and doesn't get enough on it to, to cushion it for him. And then his bar on, yeah, bar's on as well now at this stage, isn't he? And bodies, we're getting four or five bodies time and time again in the 18-yard box. And you could just feel as it was going, we're just thinking it's not going to be our day. You could see the frustration looking at Tony Moby and the staff on the bench. And Jack Clark now driving into the box. They kept trying this though, Sunderland, didn't they? This is Dak. Dak on this occasion. Cabango, isn't Cabango, it? Cabango, he did about three or four then yeah. when he came on. I was saying he was decent with his, with his head, wasn't he? Getting in the right area. I said he's got the magnet on back there. And then this one, it's off his right thigh, that one. With the block, 
yeah, I think Alex Pritchard's appealing for a penalty, isn't he? But it's not. You can see clearly there, it's off almost his right knee, isn't it? I mean, his teammates are there to, to scramble it clear for him as well. Another one stood up. Yeah, frustrating over the top of Hemi. Sirkin's on by now as well, trying to get him at the far post. And have we seen one from, yeah, this is the one now, isn't it? From Bar, out of nothing really, isn't it? It's yeah. under his feet and just bang, he pulls the trigger. And the crossbar's there to, to help Swansea out again. Um, so yeah, so we made changes, top end of the pitch. Um, it be interesting to see what Tony Moby has to say after the game, won't it? I think, yeah. uh, you know, and what the fans are thinking really as well. Um, what do you think the fans will be thinking? Because, you know, something put everything into today's performance. Do they just write it off as one of those days? I mean, it's still a point of Yeah, you, you, you come away, you know, the fans that have made the effort to travel down there, long journey down there, and they will have, you know, 20 minutes into that game thinking we're, 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 on, we're on top here. This is going to be three points heading back up to the northeast. Uh, but they, they happened those games, 11 v 10. I go back to us against Middlesbrough where we're the opposite. It was almost, we had that mentality of we're still 11 v 11, we still want to play an open game. We got found out more often than not. And I've been in games where you've had a man sent off. You think, right, lads, backs to the wall. We're already playing against a decent side yeah. who have had us on the back foot 11 v 11. Now we've really got to dig in um, and try and limit them as best you can. Force them out wide. Fight balls come in. We fancy ourselves, you know, with Darling, Cabango back in there, Humphreys. Yeah. Can they deal with those balls coming in? And can we hold on and, and see the game out? And they've managed to do that, Swansea. So huge credit to them. But frustration for us, yeah, feels like two points dropped. OK, then let's have a look at some of your thoughts on today's game as we do hashtag Ask Danny, as we do every single time here on SAFC Live. Jay has been in touch. Hello from Australia. How are the lads? Let's see us kick on again. Thanks, Jay, for tuning in down under. Let's move on to the next one. This one says, Baltimore, Maryland's biggest Sunland supporters... What's your thoughts on Rusin's performance? Always working hard to impact the game. Thanks, Austin, and the guys over in Baltimore. Yeah, Rusin, I think, yeah, especially, well, say in the first half, he only got 10 minutes in the second half and didn't see too much of the ball. But first half, I thought his movement was excellent, willing to run in behind. That little threaded one from Job, that's what I've seen probably last night. He knows he's starting. He's probably dreaming as a centre forward thing. Just give me something to go off a little one on one with the goalkeeper. And that was his golden chance. You could see him beating himself up, couldn't you, just after it. I'm saying just try and compose yourself and wait for that next opportunity. And he never got another one after that. Yeah. So that's the difference, really. So he'll be getting on the plane with the rest of the team, thinking that was the one I've... Going through saying. that moment again. Yeah, yeah, head, you yeah. do, yeah. Because he's, he's had to bide his time, hasn't he, waiting to get into the team. Uh, and then he gets taken off 10 minutes after the break. So, listen, it's difficult for Tony Mowbray. You know, yeah. You're on a hide into nothing at times in terms of making decisions. And obviously, he's looked at it and thought, right, I'm going to give it 10 minutes. And, I, and to be fair, for the first five minutes of the setting off, we weren't quite at it. It yeah. was quite a scruffy game, yeah. wasn't it? They had a bit of the ball. Didn't so quite probably, have the floor we did. No, in the it never, half. no. So he, he's maybe thinking, I'm going to give it, right, let's get these boys on. Yeah. Dak, Pritchard, experienced lads. Now, can they unlock the, the back line for us, create those little opportunities? And it never really happened. And that's what happens in football sometimes. So, frustrating afternoon. Um, we've got positives come away with a clean sheet negatives we've lost our two centre-backs I think as you said through suspension now yeah. so you're looking at Seal Triantis does he maybe Trey bring can drop in, there. in yeah Trey or move Huggins yeah. you know he's got he's to weigh it up now between now and next week Birmingham isn't it next Birmingham, week yeah. Um, so yeah it's a frustrating one it hasn't happened I say we've obviously been scoring and free flowing but we're still waiting for one of the centre forwards to stand up and, and get us a goal OK, let's have a look at some more of your thoughts on hashtag Ask Danny. Uh, this one's a quick one from Martin. It says, how are the lads from Turkey? Thanks for tuning in, Martin. And this is the last one today. It says, do you think Sunderland should be looking at an insp- experienced and championship proven striker for the January transfer window? Now, this is a big discussion which often happens online. And um, we've heard Christian Speakman speaking, speaking on record about this in recent weeks. And um, there's an ar- argument to say that they aren't out there. Well... Yeah, I mean, if you look through the leagues and uh, obviously, you know, you've let Ross go uh, and then you're hoping one of the young lads can come in and step up. It's saying there, there's a shirt there for one of them. You know, Mason's obviously had a little run in the team. Hemir's there earlier in the season. He's coming off the bench. Again, today, didn't get that. He was on for 30, 35 minutes today. Didn't have that opportunity. Had the one where he was stretching from Patrick's cross. Uh, and Rusin, and if I'm honest, out of those three at this moment in time, he looks the most likely. Um, do you think Rusin did enough to start the game against Birmingham? Well, I think he will do, yeah. I think it'll be frustrating that he's only got 55 minutes. I think you know he's, he's probably come off at half-time and yes, he's had that opportunity, but then he's thinking, oh, well, I've got 45 minutes now. 
to come out there and I'm probably going to get another good opportunity. But he wasn't out there that long to, to get another one. Um, now you're looking at January. At the, I think they'll weigh it up, obviously, uh, between now and then. Uh, but who do you go out there and get? You're going to have to maybe spend a bit of money if you want to go out and get someone. They'll probably look at our league position as well. And January is always a weird transfer window as well. Inflated prices, yeah. that kind well, of thing. From, from our point of view, so people, if we're looking to buy a player, who do we, whoever we look to buy or bring in, they'll think, well, one, they're Sunderland in, in, in the championship. So they'll know that two, we're probably looking for a striker who's going to come straight into the team, who's going to get us goals. And then if we are going to go and get someone and spend a bit of money, you're looking at somebody in January who's ready to come in, who's perhaps been scoring goals. Um, but they have to fit so the mould, they have to be the right well, character, well, they've is, got to be the right age, they have yeah. to be the right personality, don't they? Yeah, well, in terms of the age, it's, it's what you look at. Do you, do you look at somebody between 20 and 26, so that's quite a, an age gap to go and get someone in, really. Do you look at lower league? Do you look uh, abroad? Which, obviously, we've, we've been bringing players in from... Eliza Mayenza travelled with the squad this afternoon. Yeah. He wasn't on the bench, but he was in and around the squad as he comes back from injuries. He's a young, unproven in, in this division anyway. Yeah. Um, striker himself. I think Tony Mowbray and his coaches rate him as well. Maybe he's the answer. Possibly, yeah. But he's un unknown from our point of view, isn't he? Obviously, they've, they've done the homework in terms of bringing him in, but he's come in, he's had an injury. So then you put uh, say, a little bit of pressure on him to, right, there you go. We're struggling at the top end of the pitch for a, for a number nine to get us goals. Are you the man? In you go, son, type of thing. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, or, or did they look? I'm sure Christian and, and the, the recruitment staff are already looking and, and weighing things up as well. And they're, they're maybe assessing, as I said there, someone who's doing well at League One, League Two level, abroad possibly. We don't know, uh, do we? For we don't know. No, we don't know that, no. Um, we do know that the recruitment team are working hard all the time on the next window. Yeah, of course, yeah. Yeah. We'll see what happens. OK, yep. uh, we are done with the hashtags. Let's have a look at the other scores around the division this afternoon. Birmingham City 2, Ipswich Town 2. And uh, that's Sunderland's next opponent. But Ipswich stumbling to a draw there. Yeah, I, think I think from Birmingham Wayne Rooney, is that his first point since he's been that's in charge of Birmingham? Points, I think yes. so. Good start for him against the, well, an Ipswich team really who were flying. Yep. Um, so, yeah. Let's go back through them. Uh, Bristol City 1, Sheffield Wednesday 0. So Sheffield Wednesday is still struggling. Huddersfield Town 0, Watford 0, Millwall 0, Southampton 1, Plymouth Argyle 3, Middlesbrough 3, Preston North End 3, Coventry City 2, Rotherham 1, Queen's Park Rangers 1, Stoke City 0, Cardiff City 0 and West Brom winning 3-1 at home against Hull City. What does that do to the league table? So Sunderland our eighth as it stands, played 15. There's only Ipswich played a game less in the top 10. So then it's currently sitting on 23 points. Yes, yeah, so we'd have been up to six there, wouldn't we? I think in behind West Brom, had we picked up the three points. Uh, yeah, but look how tight it is, isn't it? It's very tight. It's from, from third all the way down there really, isn't it? So I think Southampton creeping along, you know, we put five past them, they've gone on a good run. Sat themselves now in fourth. They'll be confident they can kick on. Uh, yeah, so some big teams up there, isn't there? You know, everybody's saying about Ipswich. Can they can they go the distance? Obviously, still a long way to go. Um, but yeah, pegged back to a two-two today against Birmingham. But uh, I think I think Ipswich will still be there, there or thereabouts come the end of the season. We shall see. Lots of football to play, and of course, you can follow it all here on SAFC Live. Just another mention of that Hall of Fame dinner, which is happening at the Stadium of Light Friday, the tenth of November, which is uh, next week, of course. Uh, it's a three-course meal. We have Jeff Brown from BBC Television. And there's uh, many players being inducted, including Johnny Crossan, uh, Gary Bennett, Michael Gray, Steph Bannon, Stan Anderson, George Holly, Jimmy Thorpe, Johnny Campbell. Uh, and, uh, of course, there will be uh, 73 uh, Cup Final winners in attendance, as well as some other legends as well. So you go to sefc.com for full details, and you can purchase your tickets for that. The day after that, Sunderland will be back in action, and that's when you'll see us next here on SFC Live. It's against Birmingham City. It will be our Remembrance Day fixture, so there will be activity before the game for that one. Now, it's a 12.30 kickoff. Don't be caught out by the early kickoff time. Uh, that means we'll be on air from 11.45 here on SFC Live. Sunderland couldn't get all three points this afternoon, but they certainly didn't disgrace themselves down in Swansea this afternoon. We'll see you very soon. Bye-bye for now.